So a couple of years ago, I did a study with my students and they all said, 77% of them said they were stressed out. 70, wow, it's a lot. But then I had them journal about all their stressors and none of them fit the definition of stress. Hmm. They didn't have too many demands and not enough resources. What they wrote about was, my friend's parents are richer than my parents. My friend has connections in Hollywood. My other friend's mother is a big producer. My other friend's father is a politician. They're all going to get jobs. They're all going to get their internships. And I'm going to be the one that's left out. And so what they were really feeling was envy, as I shared earlier. And so that's a, that's a that what you do to help people regulate stress. Like for stress, I'm, I've been stressed out before, right? It's like too many demands, not enough resources. That's either take stuff off my plate or get more help. That's what's going to alleviate, you know, the distress. But for envy, that's a cognitive task. I have to really start working on myself, going back to that feeling of completeness and, you know, contentment. Yeah. And so I'm not convinced, you know, from these studies that, that the data are very accurate. I think some of it is just boredom, honestly. Yeah. We, we miss, we're, we're like, I'm bored. So I feel hopeless. Um, and my I want to encourage people to do better research, <laughs> to really understand children's experiences. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, we use terms like everybody says the word anxiety or depressed. And while there is a lot of depression we have to be managing and anxiety, I'm not convinced that, um, you know, people are, as depressed as we're saying they are, because I think that people are mislabeling disappointment and discouragement for depression. Oh, that's that's a really that's a really interesting take, and I'm glad to hear that because it is more hopeful, and it's and it's it's incredibly it interesting. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's critical because we just you know we just all these like and it's also contagious. So like what I yeah. found in research is that you know if parents just talk about anxiety, the kids are saying they're anxious. They don't even know what it means, but they say they're anxious. Right. <laughs> I actually had this happen to me. I was in an elementary school visiting and the teacher was talking about all this anxiety. And I went up to the kid afterwards. I was just really curious. I said, you know, what does it mean to feel anxious? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what the word meant. Right, right. Well, that's, that's really interesting. Let me just, with that said. Yes. We do have a society where people are not experiencing enough pleasant emotions Absolutely. and there's a lot of unpleasant emotions and those are the full range from discouragement to hopelessness to despair to depression from frustration to anxiety i get that and it's something important a we got to give people permission to feel Absolutely. it's okay there are probably legitimate reasons the top reasons that students feel especially you know in the chicago area um school shootings, kids are anxious about that, right? There's been a lot of stuff happening in our country right now around that. So they they get up in the morning worrying about that. I didn't worry about that when I was a kid. Right. They're worrying about climate change. They're worrying about the political turmoil in our society. And so I'm saying this because I stand firm in my belief that the goal is not to fix kids. The goal is to make society a better place for children to develop in. And that we need to not just thinking about teaching kids regulation strategies, but making sure that our politicians, our leaders, our superintendents, our school board members, our community leaders are role models for what it means to be an emotionally intelligent person.